Hey there, this is Kevin Phillips and welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to be using Lightwave 11 to model a very basic version of this arcade cabinet. Now it's going to be just the cabinet and we're going to be modeling the joysticks and buttons and coin slots. Just enough to get you started. Um, all those other bits, not too hard to model. So um, we're going to get started in a sec. I'm just going to say something about how I've done this twice now. Now this is the Lightwave version. I've also got a video on my YouTube channel where I did it in Maya. Okay, so it gives uses of the two applications an opportunity to kind of get to grips with how to start a project like this. But at the same time, it's also a comparison of the workflow between the two applications and how similar the uh, process is to model in Maya and in Lightwave. Now, I'm hoping if you're a Maya user, you're watching this video just to get a bit of comparison and just check out the differences. And likewise, if you're a Lightwave user who's never used Maya or has avoided Maya, you might be interested in just flicking over there and just checking that out to see how similar it is as well. So let's get started. Let's bring up Modeler. Okay, and it's, uh, here we go. And let's start by putting in the uh, blueprints. One is on the uh, side and one's on the, the back here. So uh, we'll go D for display. Got a backdrop tab here, bottom left. Let's uh, load image that. Okay, I made sure you see I've done this before already. Set my contrast quite low. Okay, I'm going to set my brightness about that high. Usually line these uh, sliders up. Okay, bottom right. Load in the uh, side image. Same thing again. Low contrast. Kind of dull back the brightness a bit. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to start by, uh, let's just bring this window up. And let's uh, just zoom in. Okay, and here I'm going to start by drawing or modeling these sides of the cabinet. Okay, if we look in uh, the photograph here, it's this stuff here. This is like an outer side and the machine's on the inside. So uh, let's go to create. And I'm going to use the pen tool, okay, which is here. And I'm going to start by going through here. Now, if you've watched the Maya one, you'll notice that my picture is in the opposite side. Okay, and that's because I've just got a left view. In Maya, it's uh, the right view. And I'm going down here, I'm just going to draw around the lines here. Okay, you notice that I'm just going around these rounded corners. Okay, if I just uh, zoom in here a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to drag this up and across. So it kind of goes over that curved corner, like so. Drag this down. So this line follows this. Okay, I'm going to do the same here. Can click on these points. They're still in an edit mode. All right, pen tool stays in edit mode till we're finished with it. So click on the points, drag it out to about there. Okay, bring that down. Bring that kind of up to about there. So it just goes down like that. And this one is here. Okay, and let's push, uh, let's push return. Turn off the pen tool. Okay, I'm going to unselect all the points just by clicking a blank area here. I can just check. Oops, that's yeah, so okay. Check these points are lined up. They look kind of straight. Pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm going to check uh, these ones. I think these are. Oops. Okay, let's uh, do that. Okay, we need to unselect our points first. There we go. Okay, uh, yep, that's not looking too bad. Let's use the move tool and just move them to there. If I want to uh, make sure they're lined up, use the scale tool. Okay, unlike the uh, Maya interface, you notice that Lightwave uses these icons for its cursors that change when the tool's on. Okay, and just hold down control to constrain. We just stretch it down. Push return just to turn that tool off. And then click in a blank area here just to unselect the vertices. Okay, there we go. So let's uh, go out. Here's our perspective view. Let's, here it is there. Uh, okay, got polygon selection mode down there. So selecting the different uh, components uh, through that. There we go. Okay, I'm going to move this across. Okay, sorry, pushing the wrong buttons here. This is what happens when you use uh, more than one application and you get kind of used to, to 
to one over the other. Okay, just line that up with the outside edge. And then I'm going to use the multiply and we'll say extrude. Okay, which we'll find right there. Extrude, let's just kind of drag that out like so. That just gives us our nice cabinet side. Okay. Let's uh, have a look. Oops, I'm always uh, hitting the wrong keys here. As you can kind of tell, it's uh, pretty easy to do with the uh, Windows key next to the Alt key. Okay, and what I'm going to do, let's get into the side view, is I want to just round this a bit. So I select, can I select the edge that's in there, or I can lasso select around the points. Okay, points, two points to find an edge anyway in Lightwave. Um, same kind of thing. And under multiply, I've got a tool in here called rounder. I switch it on and I can bring up the numeric options for that. Okay, rounder is kind of the same thing as uh, the bevel tool that we have in, uh, in Maya. So I just adjust the inset. There we go. Number of rounding polygons. We're done. Push return to drop that tool. Okay, I've got the same uh, here. Maybe the same thing again, rounder. If we uh, go to the numeric options, it remembers the last settings that loop. Done. And the same with the back one. Rounder. Oops. Numeric settings. Sweet. Done. Okay, we'll go up here. Okay, we'll uh, select this one. Yeah, we can probably select this one as well. And we'll use rounder. And for numeric options. Okay, that bottom one's pretty close. That top one could be a bit bigger. In fact, we can do both of them. They still look pretty good. Okay, so that's pretty good. If I'm going to be really picky, I could undo that. I could uh, unselect that one and just do one at a time. Rounder. Infinumeric. That's better. Return to deactivate that. Okay, rounder, infinumeric. And then we can just do that one separate. There we go. And return on that one too. Okay, so there's our cabinet. Now I could put the little, I think on the Maya one, I did the uh, the edge here. So I'm going to rounder. In for numeric, say two, I think is what I used in the Maya one. Zoom out here, there we go. Just bring that out, it's a little bit huge. There we go, pretty good. Seven mils. And select the point. Let's get rid of that one. Okay, there's our little edge there. We'll go uh, rounder, hit in for numeric. There's my little rounded edge there, too. Okay. So there's my cabinet sides. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now I'm going to select all of these polys. Okay, if I just click on one or two and hit, tap the right square bracket. Okay, I've copied them. Actually, no, I've selected them, sorry, I haven't copied them yet. I'm going to go edit, copy, and then paste. Then I just use the move tool and I'll drag it across to there. Okay, uh, unlike Maya, uh, everything in Lightwave here is actually part of the one object. Okay, Maya, because it's a, a full-on application, um, has everything in it. In Maya, you have um, you have this whole uh, notion of everything you make is a separate object, whereas uh, Lightwave is primarily, this modeler tool is just for modeling. So when you're modeling a model, all of this is part of the same mesh. Okay, let's uh, go to an empty layer. Now, in my if you were watching that video, we have display layers that let us hide and unhide things. Okay, and Lightwave can work in layers. So you can put a layer in the background by clicking the bottom half of this button, put a layer in the foreground, which is where we're editing in this button. Okay, and then here I'm going to draw the inside of the box. So again, create, pen tool, and do the same thing again. Click, click. Okay, I'm just going to go around. Okay, pen tool. Doesn't like it when you get too close. To a 
the point. Okay, it just thinks you're editing it because the pen tool is more than just drawing. It's all interactive, so you can come back in here, you can click and drag vertices around, which means when you're kind of drawing the stuff, you're uh, kind of uh, controlled by the the fact that it's it's kind of sees points and when you kind of like uh, draw and if you get too close to one it just assumes you've clicked on it if it's within a certain distance from the cursor so okay we'll do that just check everything kind of looks all right it's not too bad it's uh, needs a little bit of tweaking here and there that actually doesn't look too bad it's it's pretty close okay I'm just push return turn off the pen tool it's looking pretty good Okay, go okay, points mode, unselect. Okay, and use that whole uh, thing with the scale tool. Okay, stretch tool in particular, H for stretch. Holding down control, putting it in the middle where I want to flatten them to, and then just click and drag down, and they'll line up nicely for me. Okay, and the same here. H for stretch. Put your mouse where you want to flatten them to, and hold down control and drag to the left. There we go. Okay, so we're not too far off. Let's go out. Let's take this. Uh, let's take this poly. Go move. Let's move it to about there. Going to use extrude tool again. So multiply extrude, and we'll extrude it back to there. So there's the inside of my machine. And I think what I did just to finish it off was I selected these points here. Use rounder. The numeric settings for that and we're done okay last thing I need to do let's just blow away these side polys because they're inside the cabinet we don't need those and if I want to put them all together I can just cut that control X and paste it in there and I'm finished easy as that